Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer about the psalms. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. This psalm is a bit tricky in that regard, since in the douay Rheims Bible, it's only one psalm, Psalm 9. But the RSV has it split into two, Psalms 9 and 10. Yes, it is longer than the psalms we've been looking at so far, but we can still try to cover the whole thing at once, so here we go. Unto the end, for the hidden things of the sun, a psalm for David. This title and description refers directly to the sun, and this psalm covers many of the main themes of the life of Jesus, most of them having also been common to the prophets and to faithful Christians in general. I will give praise to thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will relate all thy wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing to thy name, O thou Most High. When my enemies shall be turned back, they shall be weakened and perish before thy face. For thou hast maintained my judgment and my cause. Thou hast sat on the throne, who judgest justice. God is deserving of all the praise that we can give him, and more besides, because he'll give justice to everyone in time. And our real enemies can be driven back by him, especially sinful temptations and hopelessness. Thou hast rebuked the Gentiles, and the wicked one hath perished. Thou hast blotted out their name for ever and ever. The swords of the enemy have failed unto the end, and their cities thou hast destroyed. Their memory hath perished with a noise. Not all the Gentiles, non-Jewish people, but only those who oppose the religion of Judaism and later Christianity. But the Lord remaineth for ever. He hath prepared his throne in judgment, and he shall judge the world in equity. He shall judge the people in justice, and the Lord is become a refuge for the poor, a helper in due time in tribulation. The unfaithful fall like dominoes, but God's rule lasts forever, and that rule brings justice and hope to everyone who treats God with trust and love, and especially people who are treated badly by their fellow man, or who live in terrible poverty. And let them trust in thee who know thy name, for thou hast not forsaken them that seek thee, O Lord. Those who put their trust in God and his name won't be given up on by God. Sing ye to the Lord who dwelleth in Sion. Declare his ways among the Gentiles, for requiring their blood he hath remembered them. He hath not forgotten the cry of the poor. Here we see that it was always part of the plan of God to minister to the people of other lands. Even if he gave special attention to Israel, he didn't forget the suffering people of any land, and he, after all, is the one who avenges injustice. Have mercy on me, O Lord. See my humiliation which I suffer from my enemies. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may declare all thy praises in the gates of the daughter of Sion. Please show mercy to me and rescue me from death and humiliation so that I can praise you in the way that you want me to. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The Gentiles have stuck fast in the destruction which they have prepared. Their foot hath been taken in the very snare which they hid. The Lord shall be known when he executeth judgments. The sinner hath been caught in the works of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, all the nations that forget God. Those who reject God will set up their own downfall. We should be happy that the justice of God is inevitable, rather than feeling too sorry for those who chose not to turn to God for mercy. Compassion is best when shown to those who are willing to accept it and change their ways. For the poor man shall not be forgotten in the end. The patience of the poor shall not perish forever. The faithful poor wait patiently to be liberated by God. They'll be rewarded for their patience. Arise, O Lord, let not man be strengthened, let the Gentiles be judged in thy sight. When human beings acquire great power, they usually use it to start oppressing each other, don't they? God, being perfect, will use his power to judge those who arrogantly try to control their fellow man, something he doesn't do. Appoint, O Lord, a lawgiver over them, that the Gentiles may know themselves to be but men. Humble unbelievers, 
because far too many of them seem to think that they themselves are gods. Why, O Lord, hast thou retired afar off? Why dost thou slight us in our wants, in the time of trouble? Whilst the wicked man is proud, the poor is set on fire. They are caught in the counsels which they devise, for the sinner is praised in the desires of his soul, and the unjust man is blessed. The sinner hath provoked the Lord according to the multitude of his wrath. He will not seek him. God is not before his eyes. His ways are filthy at all times. Thy judgments are removed from his sight. He shall rule over all his enemies. By using evil and dishonest methods, sinners often manage to gain the upper hand in this life and are popular among other powerful sinners who also crave power and acclaim. Very often, these people end up in charge of companies, towns, and even whole nations and empires, with God delaying their punishment for quite some time. Remember how bad things got before the flood, or how few good men were needed to save a whole city at Sodom? Sometimes, God waits for things to get exceptionally bad before he rescues those who believe in him, and that can be trying to even the most patient of souls. For he hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved from generation to generation and shall be without evil. The worst people often think of themselves as answerable to no one, and claim that they've never really done anything wrong. His mouth is full of cursing, and of bitterness, and of deceit. Under his tongue are labor and sorrow. This is phrased a bit oddly, but labor and sorrow, in this case, means that evil people work to cause or increase the suffering of others. He sitteth in ambush with the rich in private places, that he may kill the innocent. His eyes are upon the poor man. He lieth in wait in secret like a lion in his den. He lieth in ambush that he may catch the poor man, to catch the poor whilst he draweth him to him. In his net he will bring him down. He will crouch and fall when he shall have power over the poor. For he hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hath turned away his face not to see to the end. Cruelty, sadism, and betrayal are hard to detect at first, so a lot of people fall victim to them, but over time, wicked people reveal more and more of their evil as they grow more and more certain that no one will bring them to justice. Arise, O Lord God, let thy hand be exalted, forget not the poor. Wherefore hath the wicked provoked God? For he hath said in his heart, He will not require it. Thou seest it, for thou considerest labor and sorrow, that thou mayest deliver them into thy hands. God sometimes permits a person to compound their own sins. By not acting against them immediately, they feel emboldened and decide to do worse and worse things, revealing their true depravity, and making it all the more obvious why the judgment of God against them will be entirely deserved. To thee is the poor man left. Thou wilt be a helper to the orphan. God will certainly bring justice to the poor and everyone else in need. Break thou the arm of the sinner, and of the malignant. His sin shall be sought, and shall not be found. God will track down evil, and get rid of it. The Lord shall reign to eternity, yea, forever and ever. Ye Gentiles shall perish from his land. Again, the word Gentiles throughout this psalm is being used to refer to pagans and unbelievers. The Lord hath heard the desire of the poor. Thy ear hath heard the preparation of their heart. God knows that the poor become humbler because of their suffering, and more willing to turn to him for salvation. To judge for the fatherless and for the humble, that man may no more presume to magnify himself upon the earth. God will bring justice, and people won't oppress each other any more, or puff themselves up with pride under his rule. So, this psalm covers a lot of the thoughts that holy people have, and Jesus especially, beginning with open prayer and gratitude to God, then recognition of the horrible evil in the world and the suffering that it causes for us, followed by a prayer of profound faith that God will one day correct all of this and bring justice to those in need. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.